So how would we think about factor demand in this world? So we might say, well, what is partial xi, partial wj at the industry level imposing constant returns to scale? Well, how would I solve that? What would I do? Well, I just use these equations I wrote on the board. Okay. So, how do you want it? You want it? So, how would I do it? Well, this first equation would be, say, Cyj equals dp. Everybody agrees with that? That is, as I change the price of factor j, the, the change in price has to obey this equation. So Cyj has to be equal to times dp dwj. Let me write it that way. Okay. All right. So that's going to be the change in, in price. So dy dwj has to be equal to partial d partial p. D, dp dwj. Everybody agrees with that? Yes, no, maybe so. Right? Okay, that's got to be. And dxi dwj has to be equal to, just differentiate this equation, cij. Now you see where the CIJ is going to come in, right? Plus, what else? What else do I have to differentiate with respect to in this equation? What else is endogenous? Yeah, Y is endogenous. Got it like Y berry. CIY DY DWJ. Everybody agrees with that? Okay. All right, well then let's go, let's go through, what do we know? Well, what's Cyj with constant returns to scale? Well, Cyj is the same as Cjy, right? Everybody agrees with that. What is Cj? Cj is 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 the demand is xj right so what's the derivative of xj with respect to output well it's constant returns right so xj just moves proportionally with output so doesn't this say that's dp dwj equals xj over y right that is, the change in the price, as I change the factor, price of factor j, has to just be equal to how much factor i I use, I'm sorry, factor j I use per unit of output. Right? If I use one man hour per unit of output, and the wage goes up by a dollar per man hour, how much does my cost per unit of output go up? By a dollar. If I use two man hours per unit and the price and the wage goes up by a dollar, how much does my cost go up? Goes up two dollars. Right? That's all this is. Just that's that's the cost. And because marginal shares are equal to average shares with constant returns to scale, that's going to be the change in the price. Buddy understands that? Yes? Huh. How come when I did this first equation, why didn't I totally differentiate this one? You let me get away with it. I should have put a CYY DY DWJ. Right? I should have had that term. You guys let me sneak off without totally differentiating that equation, right? Because there's a Y over here too. What am I going to do now? 
What am I going to do? I'm going to cross this term off. Why? Because there's constant returns to scale. That is CYY zero. Marginal cost doesn't depend on output, right? That's what I was saying before. That's why this equation would be different if marginal cost, if you didn't have constant returns to scale. Not only would this not be the average share, this would be the marginal factor usage, you'd have another term. You'd have another term because marginal cost would be changing. All right? So you guys let me get away with that. So what I can do is just plug in everything I know. So what I'm going to get is dxi dwj equals cij plus ciy was what? xi over y dy dwj is dp dwj times the derivative of demand with respect to price partial d partial p times xj over y okay but you agree with that formula right in terms of our substitution and scale effects, this is a substitution effect, and this is a scale effect. All right. Now we know that if we were in the two input case, we know that if i is not equal to j, that this term is positive, right? But he understands that, right? Then in the two input case, the cross derivative of the cost function is positive. Why? Why is the cross derivative of the cost function in a two input case positive? How do I know that? Had to be, couldn't be negative. Well, what happens if I raise the price of factor J in the two input case? Or any input case. We know J goes down. Well, if J goes down and output's constant, what must happen? I better go up, right? Just, there's no two ways about it. That is, on average, the substitution effect has to be positive toward the other good, negative from the good itself, right? That's a fundamental principle. Now, if you have more than two inputs, you can have complements. You can have two inputs both go down when one price goes up, but then the third one has to go up, right, if you had three inputs. You always, on average, those terms have to be positive. We know that from the homo, homostaticity of the demand system, right? We know that the sum of all those cross price effects is zero, or the weighted sum by shares is also zero, holding output constant. And because we know the sum is zero, some got to be positive, some got to be negative. If the own one is negative, on average, the cross ones have to be positive. Right? That is, on average, these cross derivatives are positive. Okay? That's our substitution effect, and this is our scale effect.